Hello and welcome to the Tarkus Zone. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about the game Ribbon World The First Era. And the news of the day is they've got a release date, which is April 14th, 2023, so about eight days away. Now, I have helped test this game uh, for probably a couple weeks now. So uh, you'll see that uh, for the last two weeks, I've got 37 hours in, but I've got 144 hours total in the core game. And then in the playtest game that they had this weekend, I had another additional 20 hours. So I've got a lot of uh, knowledge about this game. And I only can tell you about what uh, was in the system when I tested it. And I only can uh, talk about some of the things that weren't in the system when I tested it. And I think maybe I'll start with that because I think I've done a few videos now that talk about this game and show about all the assets that are in it. One of the things that was not in the test that we just did was the blocks uh, being able to be destroyed. That was not implemented in the blocks not having hit point values, meaning that if I put a wall or if I created a building, there was no mechanism in the game for somebody to destroy that building or do any damage to those structures. I could remove it with the hammer because I was the one that put it in there, but if somebody walled off a bridge, there was no game mechanic that allowed you to destroy that item. So though that that is going to be added uh, before the 14th, it's just that I have no experience around uh, telling you, uh, you know, the number values like the 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 wood block has this many uh, hit points, or or the stone block has this many, or how many hits it takes. Uh, there was only a few weapon types that I was able to um, make uh, in the uh, in the test, and I know before the 14th they're going to implement a few other things. I'm going to actually go over the roadmap here. In a minute, maybe I'll actually drag that over now and we'll talk about the roadmap because I think that also is going to allow me to address some of the things I think uh, that I, I wanted to address in this video. Uh, so there are going to be a few things that are going to be implemented uh, before the 14th that we didn't see up till now is I guess we're in, uh, in, in the uh, sieging part of the game was not implemented. So uh, let's just scroll up here now. I'm, this is planned updates the, that on this side, and I'm assuming that that's stuff that's going to be in the future. That that's going to happen, you know, down the road. Now, when you look at level improvements, you can click on these, improve the players' uh, use of their levels, and add additional levels based on gameplay. Okay, that's what that is. Advanced uh, claim permissions. This is one of the things I also wanted to talk about. Is they didn't have permissions in the test. So I couldn't give uh, access to friends. Now I asked the developer, how is that gonna happen by the 14th? And they had said that they're only, I'm gonna call it a faction, let's call it a faction, or your guild. So if you have people within your guild, all the guild members can have access to all the items on the claim, meaning they'll have access to the doors, they'll have access to the chests, they'll have access to do anything they want with any asset that's on the claim because it w the claim will be guild permissions. So if you don't want to be in a guild permission system uh, and you want to work with your friend, do note that you're going to have to, um, and you want to be outside the scope of being in a guild, and you, you only have to build your own thing and your friend will have to build their own thing because you guys won't have croft permissions. You can't say, I want to give my friend permissions to my land. Uh, I guess you could create a mini guild and have a two-person guild. I imagine that will be easy too. Um, but just note that it's not a robust permission system at this time. And I think with this advanced claim permission tab that I just brought up, claim owners can now advance permissions from guild members using locks and other items or doors or chests. So they'll have a locking, um, they'll have a professional wheel to build a lock. And then when you apply that lock to an item, then you can give permissions to whoever you want to have access to that item, to that door, uh, to the to the to the land platform, because I think also you know when you look at the land claims and the permissions with the land claim is right now there when you go to the land claim you just open it up for guild permissions, but it'd be nice if you could open it up for just for friends, you know, your friend, a couple friends, you know, and your friends are uh, are uh, you know only invited without having to get into the. Uh, the, the guild, you know, permissions, because I guess you could have three friends that are part of a guild, but they're doing their own thing over here. 
and they want to share their assets, but they don't want to be doing it with the whole guild. So they're in a guild, but they want to kind of do their things between the three of them. And that's what I mean by having that other layer of outside of guild permissions to have friends have certain permissions and whatnot. So that'll get all ironed out. But that was not in the testing up till now. So we'll see how that works. And I, the reason why I bring these up now is I think the developer wants uh, people to have their hands on the product so that we can really iron out a lot of uh, the things that are going to be implementing in this um, in, the, in, in Riven World. And I think, you know, getting it, getting the platform out on Steam, having people purchase the game, get onto the platform, start playing it. And I think what will happen is these items that are in their list, they'll shift priorities based on what the what the you know consensus is of the player base saying, well, look, we need to work on the inventory crafting or we need to work on the basic survival system better. I, I mean, we've got a we got a lot of people that help test it. But I think once it becomes live, you're just going to get a lot more people interested in the game because it's more of a it's more of a um, um, f full game now. I mean, we've gone through, what, two months of playtesting and it went from a little baby baby game to an actual playable game now. So I think once the wor word gets out that the game's, you know, where it's at in its state, people are going to want to to get into this game. All right, so we're going to go farming update. They're going to add farming to the game. Runes and magic, that is part of the sacrifice system, I believe, with the, with the cauldrons. Collect runes by donating items to the shrines. I call them cauldrons. They look like cauldrons. The runes can be used uh, for advanced combat, unlock special abilities, and more. So the sky's a limit on what the developer wants to do here uh, with the rune system. Now, one of the things that they did talk talk to me about was there'll be runes where you can bound an item to your person so when you die you won't drop it so that will be nice especially if you got an item that you don't want to uh you don't want to lose all right animal hunting update uh there are no animals in the game up till now but but they are going to be adding uh deer by early access, but they got it in yellow here. We'll get there um, over on that side in a second. I mean, actually, I think it would have been easier to do this side first and talk about the stuff in the in 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 the future. But we're already here. We're talking about the stuff. Advanced cooking update. We get what that is. Dark Age device update. Uh, I imagine these are like um, capture players and put them into devices designed for torture to get information out of them. We're hoping to add these to help increase a role play on the server. Okay. And then the other one is underwater uh, life, like plants, fish, and swimming, and more. I, you know, what also nice is with the underwater system, they could actually put nodes, unique nodes, in the in in the ocean. So you have to swim out to them to collect them, and then you get you put some of them so far out that you got to almost time your 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 swimming to the surface. That would be neat. Uh, and they, they would be unique nodes that you only find in the ocean. So it would force you to, and even you might go out there and build a barge. So you go out there and you build yourself a nice little barge. And then you know where the node is. So you go out to the barge and then you can get the node. That would be pretty cool. So this is the stuff that's going to be in early access. But I don't think this is going to appear on the 14th because it's in development. I know they want to get this the uh, animal AI down. Uh, and in this situation, they haven't got it done yet. So they want to. Um, I know they've been working hard on it, and uh, so we haven't seen it yet. Player capture prison system, again, that is something they, they, they've been in development. They're working on it. Basic economy um, mode. This is really just NPCs that they dot around the landscape that you can sell your stuff to, and they'll give you in-game currency. And then this way, you can use that in-game currency when you run into somebody. You could say, look, uh, can you make me... Can, I hit my mic there. Can you hit me... Uh, can you make me a sword? I'll give you a 10 gold. And this way, instead of swapping for game items, you're just swapping for gold. And then that person can use that gold in another trade that they want to do. And I think also the vendors are going to be um, uh, sell items too, is what I understood. Uh, you can become king. These are, The things in green are things that are going to be in the game. So let's talk about these things. You can become king. I did a video on how to do that. You can land claim. Did a video on how you did that. Now, 
again, hopefully they get the block system down where the blocks can take damage now. I don't know about the world gobbling up system where if you don't pay your shrine or your taxes that the world will hurt the claim. I'm not sure if that will be implemented by the 14th. Uh, I don't know. We'd have to see. I mean, because it needs to be an incentive for people to pay their taxes, right? Uh, you know, because if you don't, I mean, there's got to be an incentive. I mean, other than, other than the fact that you, you can role play it, just make sure you pay your taxes. Uh, One-handed uh, combat, uh, two-handed combat. Now, the co two-handed combat when I was playing the test was a little sluggish, and they were going to work on that. So hopefully that uh, that pans out. Because uh, with the two-handed weapon, I only could do an overhead chop. I only could do that. I couldn't do any of this. And I thought that was weird. And the thing about the overhead chop, every time I pulled the thing back, the mouse wanted me to look out to the sky. So every time I went to attack somebody, I had to look to the sky first and then come down. And by the time I came down, the person wasn't even standing there any longer. So it was like I had to lose a line of sight to get the sword to work. Uh, and it just was, it didn't work. Uh, it didn't work well. Uh, so hopefully they get that fixed. So range combat, I have not seen that. I haven't used the bow in the game. It wasn't available in the game, so I don't know how that's going to work and what the balancing around that's going to be and if it's going to be a fletchering system. Not really sure about that. Uh, if you got to make your arrows or you have to, you know, once you make the bow, you got to make the arrows. Uh, basic survival system, that is in the game. That was working just fine. That seemed balanced. Inventory crafting, yeah, all that seemed well, working well in the last, uh, the inventory that they had in the system. Uh, was working great. The workbench crafting was working great, and the base building was working great. So a lot of this stuff just needed, a couple of these things just needed some tweaks, and a lot of this stuff is working just smoothly in the game. So it's when they implement these other th items, that's when we need to be able to, you're going to test them, basically. I mean, the product will probably be out on the market by then. And once uh, it is, then it becomes, I mean, that's what early access is. It's really an open beta for a year, right? I mean, a lot of games, some games are better at it than others where they've got 90% of their product done. And when they just, when they do the early access is 90%. So they got 10%. I mean, I would say in this game, they might be at the 50%. I mean, I know there's so much that they can do with this game. So if you looked at it at a point of, okay, it is what it is today in the, in the future modding and the future plugins you can make this with this thing, I would say the game is at 10% of its value right now because it's early, early, early because it's got so much potential. But as a game, if you didn't incorporate the fact that you'll be able to do plugins and add-ons and mods and just looked at it as a game as it is now, I think they're 50% there. I think they need uh, a few things be added, especially uh, some of the, the weapon balancing and, and the weapons in the game um, and how they perform in the game. Uh, and, then the, and then the animal AIs is, is a pretty big portion. I would say that's a good 20% of a game like this is how animals react to players. Now, I see the deer here. Now, when we look at the, when we look at the plan updates, I don't see monsters listed here. I see advanced hunting update and more animals passive growth that would allow players to, to breed them. So I don't see, you know, I don't see like goblins or skeletons or mana cores or, or tur turtle, you know, turtles. Turtles are cool because turtles can do water combat and they can do land combat, which makes them cool. I uh, don't, uh, I don't see mounts here either. And this is their, their, uh, this is their roadmap as of today. Now, obviously this will change as they check the boxes here and then say, okay, let's add five more boxes over here to ideas that we have for the game. Then the list, you know, gets longer. I mean, there's a few things that I'd like to see in the game uh, developed. And I've mentioned a couple of these things to the developers and some of the stuff, you know, they implemented or, or have an implementation too close to what I was thinking because with these type of games, they're kind of uh, unique to themselves. So they usually have X, Y, and Z in them, right? So when you get the core basic system together, uh, then, uh, then, you know, and it's a survival game, then, you know, because this is a survival game in the medieval 
setting, right? So we all know what survival games are about. So you got to check the boxes in that area and then you branch out to do other things. But I think the monsters, I'm excited to see that and how that uh, works in this in the system because currently right now the only reason to have a weapon in the game is to to attack another player and i would like to see an an option uh where you, your option is just not to attack because the problem the problem to see is is the balancing as a uh, you get leveling in the game for using the weapon and if i did not feel that i was par to take people on I could go practice on a animal AI and get my combat up. So I could go kill deer all day and I'll get my leveling up and then I get my leveling up and then I go against the guy, uh, the PVP -er, and now I feel more balanced because I got a few levels on the guy and I've got a slight advantage, but that slight advantage is like a par, you're, you're, you're uh, like in golf, you know, you, you get, you get your pluses and minuses before you go. Uh, so it, it's, it's like that. So you, you need those levels cause you're not a good player. So you need a little, little levels to stay with the better players. So that's the way I look at it is if you have options to help get your combat skill up, then, um, then, then you're more apt to want to fight with other, other, other people because uh, you've put the effort in to, to getting your combat skill up, but it, it allows you to play on par with some of the advanced PVPers that might be on the server. All right, well, I, it's coming out on the 14th. I'm going to minimize this here. It's coming out on the 14th. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, they are going to put a price on this soon, I believe, uh, and uh, and hopefully they do that soon so that people know what it's going to cost. Uh, maybe they do a pre-download or a pre-purchase that you can purchase the game and then pre-download it before eight days away. But that might not also happen, a pre-download, because they might be packaging it up still seven days from now because they, they've got a very aggressive you know, roadmap there. So they might be actually packaging the game up, up to the day. So you might not get a pre-download for this thing. All right. Well, that's it in a nutshell. That's the Ribbon World update for today. Well, I uh, hope to see you guys on the 14th uh, and uh, have fun gaming. And thank you for joining me. This has been the Tarkus Zone.